Mm -hmm. Okay, guys. This is Grace Excuse or Remedy, and today is lesson 20. That's right, 20. Um, I've been working on a few things, uh, uh, but I think today what we're going to do is cover one chapter in particular. We're going to go to chapter 24, guys. In the book of Matthew, there's a few things we're going to look over today, and... I figured we get started there. Alrighty. Now we're going to go to, uh, actually we'll get started at verse 37, chapter 23, so go back a page uh, next door there. Alright, we ready to begin? We'll just, go, we'll just go as we're led. I've already asked the Lord for the message, so we're just going to hope for the best, see if everything gets put into an order here. Oh Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stone them which are sent to you. How often would I have gathered your children together, even as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and yet you would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say to you, you shall not see me henceforth, till you shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Chapter 24 And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, that was mom. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Truly I say to you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And we know, of course, what happened. And as he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? Guys, it is so important that we listen to these words. Um, because God is raising up a lot of people to speak them. Okay, he can use old guys, he can use young guys, he can use old women, he can use young women. We can minister to everyone. You don't have to be in a fellowship. Guys, just go in faith. Because the days are very, very short now. Guys, I cannot explain enough how short they are. Verse 4. Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that you do not, wait, excuse me, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. You, you've seen the news, right? And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Nation shall rise up against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places, many places. Have you seen what's happening out there? China. Russia and the United States guys, they're not even talking to one another anymore. And you've seen about the earthquakes? They're all over the place. And when I, when I mean all over the place, guys, you don't have to listen to me about it because I don't have the facts and, you know, the stats in front of me. Look in, uh, look in the YouTube about earthquakes. They're just all over. Famines. You've seen the starving uh, countries all around. You see the crops failing. Food prices rising. It's just that bad, guys. All these are the beginning of sorrows. I tell you right now, we're knee deep in them. And they're getting worse. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. This is happening to Christians around the world. Guys, you may not see it because if you're in the United States, you wouldn't see it. Oh, there's some persecution, but not nearly what's happening to a lot of Christians, brothers and sisters elsewhere in the world. And it is very, very, very heartbreaking. These women are being uh, taken. Uh, families that are out there as missionaries or brothers and sisters that are, uh, they put their lives at risk for the sake of the gospel. They go out to preach to these people who turn around and rape their women take their wives, sell their children, and behead the dads. I tell you, they looked past what they saw 
and they knew exactly what the risk was and yet they still went doesn't that increase some of you guys' faith it did mine uh, there's a far greater resurrection guys for those and all those who choose to lay down their life for the king remember that then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and shall and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake now think about that guys you'll be hated of all nations when that one world order becomes a one world order which the Lord already knows about there's also going to be a one world religion any other religion outside that one world religion and I can almost assure you it's got something to do with the Catholics anybody outside that little friendly circle and you know what I'm talking about is going to be public enemy number one and the ones that are saying public enemy number one is already Christians and Jews look you know, my Jewish brothers and sisters out there you don't have to be a Christian Jew to be on the list any Jewish person remember that one world religion anything outside that scope is public enemy number one you will be afflicted and you will be hated of all nations for my name's sake and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another that is sad and many false prophets shall rise they shall deceive many guys might I share but Dave, come on, we're sharing too much, Dave. Well, no, I know it's not a lonely hearts, but really we should share some of these things because these are very important. Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Now, how do you suppose, guys, those prophets are going to deceive many? There are prophets all over the world. Everybody wants to be a prophet. You notice this? Why do you suppose everybody wants to be a prophet? Well, Dave, I mean, all I got to do is look in the New Testament and the Old Testament, Dave, but mainly the Old Testament, I would say. They're always doing something neat. They're splitting the sea. Elijah calls down fire from heaven. You got a prophet laying right over a, a dead body breathing in. Miracles, Dave. Miracles. Get on board. That's why many false prophets are going to arise. They're going to be doing these things, guys. They're going to think that there's some great one. I, I could tell you a story. The Lord doesn't want people going out there performing miracles to have adoration of men. The Lord's raising up shepherds that love his flock to go out there for his sheep. You understand? The miracles they follow, yeah, I know. But truly the best gift, guys, if you don't have love, then anything you may be gifted to do will mean nothing. It has to be before and it has to be after. Test yourself in the faith. And because sin shall abound, oh guys, let me tell you, look outside, look on TV, and I need not go any further. What's going on in the world today is sinful. The whole world lies in it. It's disgusting. Will it get better? I know people like to think it will, but it won't. Not until the Lord comes himself, and he'll do away with it utterly, quickly, and thoroughly. And because of that, guys, the love of many will wax cold. And you can say, well, why would that happen, Dave? Why would, why would Christians love wax cold? Well, not just Christian guys. For instance, you're given to a charity every week. You give that charity every week as unto the Lord. And then suddenly you find out that charity is nothing but more than a fraud. And that you've been giving to somebody's personal bank account all that time. And they've been using you along with many others. Within yourself, you say, well, I'm just not going to give that anymore. You know, because it's, it's everybody's cricket. Well, that's what the enemy would want you to do. And remember something, guys. 
You were given out of a pure heart to help somebody. God saw that fruit that you, in your heart, wanted to do something well for someone else, to edify them, to help them, to feed them, to clothe them, something that was noble, but as unto the Lord. The other person receiving that love distorted that gift and used it upon himself. You did no sin. You did what was expected of you, thinking you were doing something as unto the Lord for good. The other person is the one that has to account for what they did with that gift that you tried to offer in good faith. Don't, go, don't grow weary in well-doing. There's a reason why the Lord said that, because there was going to be times when we're going to get deceived. You're going to think you're doing something for a noble or good cause, and it's going to be rerouted rerouted into somebody's bank account and the idea is that they may want you to feel badly about it. You keep giving for the right reason. Don't stop giving because you think everybody's a crook then. And if you have had a few situations like that, there are ways around that, guys. Well, how, Dave? Well, if you're a little worried about sending gifts in, find Look, all over the United States, there are hungry kids. All over the United States, you're going to find a family or two having a rough time. You can do an alm very simple. You can do a tithe the same way. It's not hard, guys. Stick an envelope uh, with a few 20s in it and put it in somebody's mailbox anonymously. Just make sure you know who it is and don't let them know who you are. Find out who are the widows in town. They might be having a rough time. Pay for somebody's meal at a restaurant anonymously. You know what I mean? There are so many things you can do that you know will benefit someone if you're having problems with the meal thing. But there's always going to be hungry. There's always going to be poor. There's always going to be needy. You understand what I'm saying? Don't give up on that stuff. Guys, that has an abundance of good fruit in it. And the Lord actually is happy when we do do those things for others. Don't withdraw yourself from doing something good for someone else because you may have been you know, burned once or twice. Because that's what the enemy is trying to get you to do is to withdraw from charity. And charity, guys, uh, what's it say about charity? Charity covers a multitude of sins. Do good for those. Not because you want to get sins covered, but because you just love the Lord, guys. Come on. Remember that group we talked about once? There were those on one side and there were those on the other. What did Jesus account to the one side? He says, come on in. The Father has prepared such a great thing for you. Enter into the joy. What was the things? When I was hungry, you gave me some food. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was sick, it was your bouquet that I saw on the table the minute I came out of surgery and I woke up to Dave or to Mary in Christ with love. You understand what I'm saying? It doesn't take much, guys. And those are the things Jesus quoted. Not coming to the joy of the Lord because when I needed a show, you brought down the lightning. No. Let love be your guide in everything you do. Guys, it's the little things. Would you please believe, Dave, on this? You will have more joy, and you will cause the angels to literally do a dance in heaven for just doing something so simple. It doesn't take a lot. It just takes a willing heart. You understand what I'm saying, guys? So don't let your, don't let your love wax cold, guys. Come on. And there are some that are probably out there that's had the situation, and that's why I'm being led to tell you that. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. When you therefore shall see the abomination that causes the desolation spoken of by Daniel, the prophet stand in the holy place. Now you remember how we did speak about this, guys. There's going to be something that's going to be so bad that's going to happen. When you shall see the abomination that's going to cause the desolation. Now why would 
Dave, why are you saying, Dave, you shouldn't do that. Why are you saying, uh, instead of spoken of by Daniel the prophet, when you shall see the abomination of desolation? Why are you saying the abomination that causes desolation? I base that, guys, basing on what Jesus says. When you see these things, flee. What are the desolations? I do believe it's something Daniel spoke about. I do believe it has something to do with the speaking statue that's erected to a person that was killed that was a world leader. I don't I don't think it's very very uh, high tech. I think it's something that's simple that a child could understand it. But know this guys. When that happens and guys these words you might want to listen to. When this happens, do what he said. Flee to the mountains. Just run. And don't look back. If you happen to be in Jerusalem. And if you're in Guam or China or India or Pakistan. Stand in a holy place. And we've talked about that too. The holy place was already provided when Jesus came down with the Father to dwell in you. In your soul. To seal you. You understand? That's the holy place. Sanctify. And, and just pray earnestly at that moment. Okay, so whosoever readeth, let him understand. Okay? But let him understand this too, guys. We speak of desolations a lot. And we're going to go through a few scriptures today. But there are so many desolations. And guys, you can look outside right now. Wherever you happen to be. Guys, listen to this. Look outside right now. You may be looking at a fairly quiet neighborhood. It's a nice sunny day. Kids are out playing. You're looking at desolations. And the reason you're looking at desolations... Well, wait a minute, Dave. They, they go to they go to church every Sunday. They go they they you know we got a neighbor right over here. To, you know that's not it. If they're not receiving the gospel as Jesus laid it out, if they're not receiving a salvation story as Jesus laid it out, you're looking at desolations, guys, because they haven't received the truth. And we're going to go into this. This no no this time, David did some homework. That's how important this is. Doesn't make a difference if you're going to fellowship every Sunday twice in that day. Doesn't make a difference if you're going to Bible study on Wednesday. If they're not feeding you the truth, you're not receiving the truth. And if you're not receiving the truth, how can you be saved by it? Right? Let's go on. Then let them which be in... Now, here, here's his warning. Now let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not, not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Don't even go back for their clothes. Remember Lot's wife, don't turn back. Not even, don't even look back, guys. Look, I will take great joy in my heart and the Lord's witness to it if I know that you guys listen to, to that part. And if you are in Jerusalem on that day and you see something out of the ordinary happening that is just in your own heart, the Lord's saying, this is wrong. Run. You make sure you do. Don't look back. You grab that kid, that precious baby God gave you. Husbands, you grab that wife that has not even delivered yet. Newborns, the parents, you take her as quickly as you can and your wife out of that area quickly and head to the mountains. And there the Lord has provided for you. Heed that warning. And 
and woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck on those days. That's right. Pray that your, your flight's not on the Sabbath. Pray you're not breastfeeding and pray that you're not heavily carrying. That's how important that is. Jesus made note of it for a reason. And when he says flee to the mountains, we don't ask why. We just flee to the mountains, guys. But pray that your flight be not in the winter or neither on the Sabbath day. And here's why. That's how sudden it's going to be, guys. For then shall be great tribulation. That's the tribulation period. It is coming real soon, guys. Such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh saved. But for the elect's sake, those days have been shortened. Then if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, there, or, or there, believe it not. Don't believe it, guys. Come on. You know he's coming up through the clouds. He's coming back the way he went. Guys, read Acts. As he left on a cloud and was received up to glory, in the same like manner, he's coming back. Okay? Remember that. So if anybody tells you, look, he's over there in Philadelphia. He's preaching to the masses. Look at all the signs and wonders he's doing. Don't you believe it? Lo, he's over there in, the, in that new temple right now performing all kinds of miracles. Don't you buy it for a minute. Yes? Don't. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders inasmuch that if it were possible they shall see, deceive even the elect. That's how it's going to be, guys, if it was possible. Now, guys, the only way it would be possible to deceive the elect, and yes, there will be some deceived. Why? Because they're not opening up the Bibles anymore in the fellowships. Because the shepherds are getting a little sleepy at the helm and not telling them what they need to hear. How are they going to know the faithful shepherd's voice if the very ones charged to teach them have decided not to speak? How are they going to know? Behold, I've told you before. Therefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, do not go there. No. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. For as the lightning for as the lightning comes out of the east and shines even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together, and immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven. After the tribulation, guys, there's going to be some troubles. We're heading right into them, guys. Truly. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth cry. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. The way he went up, guys, is the way he's coming down. He shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. Might I share a moment? Down here, it says, immediately after the tribulation of those days, after seven year tribulation, we all know that, guys, shall the sun be darkened. And the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven. Now has anybody looked up and seen how many stars there are? Where is this going, Dave? 
Remember, this is the day like no other. Who do you think is going to be reaping up both bad and good? The tares were, were gathered up and they were placed in bundles and tossed to be burned. But the wheat was gathered up and taken to the Father, the ones that were saved. And who did this? The stars, when they came down from heaven, met, oh my goodness, revelation time, guys. I just read that too. Really, Dave, you want to share? Well, look, the Lord says that when he came back, he was coming back with all of his saints, okay? Those saints are the angels. You're likened unto the angels, guys. That is really exciting for me. Look, you're likened unto the angels. So he's bringing his saints back with him through those clouds. He's sure enough coming through the clouds and on a cloud. But there's something different about this because the Lord's bringing back his saints too. And what are the saints going to do? They're likened unto the angels. What's another name for the angels, Sharon? Aren't they called stars, Dave? Yes. They're called stars. So the angels, which already have been said by Jesus to be the stars, are coming down. They're picking up the tares, and you know what's going to happen to them. And they're picking up those that have slept in him and taking them home. What are they taking home, Dave? Likened? unto the angels, so angels are coming down to pick angels going up. And hence, heaven's full again. Keep that in your heart, guys. Now listen up. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and puts forth his leaves, you know that summer is near. Guys, again, please look outside. So likewise you, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Guys, might I share a moment? Look up. Your redemption is very, very near, guys. Truly I say to you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Oh, man. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knows no man, no, not the angels of heaven. No day, no hour, no one knows, not even the Lord himself. But my Father only. I got to tell you, I, 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 look, I, I was a fan of Moses, but I trust in Christ. I was a fan of Elijah, but I love the Father. Because I got to tell you something, guys. There's just nobody better. He looks after you. I, I woke up a little depressed this morning. I had a bad dream. Gee whiz. Pray for Brother Dave, okay? Pebbles. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of Noah, for as in the days that were before the flood, that were, they were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying, and they were given in marriage. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark. You had to wonder about that day. Here's Noah. In the middle of a dry desert or a dry plain. Probably could have been a pretty place. Who knows. But here he is building that boat about half the size of the Queen Mary. And I'm sure they all had a big laugh about it. Until. They were eating. Yeah. Going to the, you know, all you can eat for $12.95 buffet. They were drinking. Bars still full. I'm talking about today. They were given in marriage. Marriage is all the time. Until the end came. So it's going to appear to be normal, guys. Business as usual. But it's not. Again, look outside. Again, look on YouTube. Just look under the heading Days of Noah. I mean, 
I don't really have to go there too much on this subject, guys. It's that bad. And they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. I want you to listen to this. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord does come. But know this, that if the good men of the house had known in that watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Now I said it before guys, when a Lord comes back there's going to be no doubt about it when he comes back. Two women will indeed be in the field in one part of the world. One's going to be taken, one's going to be left. I imagine when the trumpet blows, everybody's going to be a little shook. Two will be in bed. One will be taken, the other left. Where? Wherever the eagles are gathered is because of where the carcass is. Guys, this is not hard arithmetic. At that moment, nobody will know, but everybody will know. There's going to be those gathered up, those that are alive and remaining. A child could count them by that time. Time jumps. Therefore, be ye also ready for in such an hour as you do not think the Son of Man will come. Who then is the faithful and wise servant when his Lord has made who his Lord has made ruler over his household to give them meat and due season? Guys, this simply means, and this little passage I'm sure every one of us should understand, okay? This means one thing, guys. Every parent, or if you're a single parent, or if you're a widow, or a widower. If you're grandma or grandpa in charge of kids because their parents are no longer with you and you're trying to raise them up in a godly home, teaching them values, teaching them about the Lord, this is your duty. But this is also our joy. We're supposed to do this. So when he comes back, if he finds you doing just this, if you are doing this very thing, teaching them about the Word of God. In whatever way the Lord has put in your heart to do. When I, my kids were little, I used to use, you know, little illustrations. Okay? I draw a little or we do a cartoon Bible, something to get their interest. If the Lord comes back and sees you doing this, it'll make you ruler over much. But that is our duty. We're supposed to be giving them food of a different type, a spiritual type. You know what I mean? Not just not just meeting their, their their nutrition needs, but their spiritual needs. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he comes, shall find so doing. Truly, I say to you that you sh he shall make him ruler over all of his goods. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, "My Lord delays his coming," and I want you to listen to this verse forty-eight, okay, from forty-eight on. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord, he delays his coming. Where is the promise anyway? Come on. 2,000 years. Gee whiz. Everything's still going nicely. Listen. And shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and to drink with the drunkards. You know what that means, guys, do you? To eat and drink with the drunkards. What was it that... Uh, Jesus himself passed around that table or to the crowds by way of his apostles and disciples. The bread represents his life, his doctrine, his doctrine, and the wine's the new covenant. If you're doing that, you're doing well. If you start getting edgy or you get veered away from other things entering into your life and these are things that we're going to go over then what winds up happening instead is you start eating either a doctrines of men or 
you're drunk with the things of the world, which means you're not even, you're not sober anymore, guys. You're walking, walking as a blind man, and when you're drunk, you're disorderly, you're reckless. My Lord delays his coming, and you start to eat with the drunkards. And we all know what a drunk is. You get the idea. You can picture the idea in your head, I'm sure. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looks not for him, and in the hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Guys, another way to look at this scripture, as I am, I'm looking at it a different way too. That we all know about the second coming. But what happens if the Lord comes and sees you doing this thing or his messengers are watching? I do believe that is a fact. Because I do believe the enemy watches, tempts, progs, uh, pokes, throws darts, buffets. But the angels, they watch. They watch them too. If you're doing the right thing, guys, the only thing you have to be concerned about is when do you get to go home? If you're doing the wrong thing, there's a certain type of fear that comes over you. And you can be sure that the enemy will use everything at his disposal who is able to destroy your body. The soul belongs to the Lord. That's his judgment. And you go to sleep. But the enemy then, he can destroy the body. Do you understand? So let's be vigilant to do the right thing each day. Stay away from the bars, guys. Do the right things by the wives. Behave. Just behave. Okay? Look, I don't want anybody lost. And when I say this, I mean it. So behave. Then shall... The, now, this is something I specifically wanted to, to share uh, on this one. Um... It's the ten virgins. You maybe you've heard of it, okay? But let, let's go over it. Okay, I got a few minutes left. Let's go over this one. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. I looked a long time for this guy, excuse me, the beans. I've been here a while looking for this. It's funny, when you're looking for something, you're never going to find it. Then shall the kingdom, this is chapter 25, guys, Matthew. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps. I'll read it first. And went forth to meet the bridegroom. I know you guys got to get this anyway, but it's good to review. And five of them were wise, and five of them were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their lamps, or vessels, with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so. Lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went, To buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Truly I say to you, I, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man comes. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country 
who calls his own servants and delivers unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents. And likewise he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged it in digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time the Lord of those servants came and reckoned with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered unto me two talents. Behold, I've, got, I've gained another two talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that you were a hard man, reaping where you have not sown, and gathering where you have not straw. And I was afraid, and went and hid your talent in earth. Lo, here, here that is that is yours. His Lord answered and said to him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I have not straw. You have you should have rather put it put you should have therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, probably in the bank, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with interest. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which had ten talents. For unto every one that has shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that has not shall be taken away even from which he has. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into utter darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him. Those are the stars we talked about. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you gave me some clothes. I was sick, and you visited me in the hospital. I was in prison, and you came to minister to me. And you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered? When did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and gave you drink? When did we see you a stranger and took you in, or naked and clothed? Or when saw we si when when did we see you sick or in prison and came to you? And the king shall answer and say to them, Truly I say to you, inasmuch as you have done this to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it for me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. I was naked, and you clothed me not. I was sick, and in prison, and you didn't visit me. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you? Or, in other words, help you. Then shall he answer them, saying, Truly I say to you, inasmuch as you did it not to one of these the least, and he's looking at the other group, you did it not for me. 
and these shall go away into everlasting punishment but the righteous into life eternal guys there are two groups there are those that are doing the miracles and they will follow because if you have faith these things will happen even in his name but if you're doing these things and you kind of get on a little high horse and then when these other two other group are sick or they need something to eat and all that stuff and you're not going to do that to them you did it not to him but these who had not much but knew that you were hungry that you were thirsty you wound up in a hospital you had an opportunity to help they're the ones that ministered to you so the gifts don't make the uh, saint the fruit does you understand what I'm saying now having said that we're going to uh, end right here for a, a bit okay because we're going to go over this self same chapter 25 again and we're going to put a few a few things in there that i have come across and i think are very important for us all okay guys so with that i'll see you in a few bits